All right, we're here for the open roaster class for New Zealand Nationals, um, judged by Dr. Chris Hayhow uh, here in Columbus. The uh, the interview while they're uh, going through and looking at the rabbits here the first time before we get to the top ten, uh, I have Andrew Gawk, uh, which Andrew uh, has had an incredible night. Uh, he's no... Uh, uh, or, uh, he's always consistently towards the top in, in the commercial classes, but uh, tonight's one of those special nights for sure. Uh, he took first, second, th and third in the uh, open meat pen class. You said reserve in, in or uh, your, your kids won reserve in the uh, uh, meat pen class. Um, and then uh, you also, in single fryers, what, how did you place again? Uh, we were uh, grand reserve, fourth, fifth. So, Sixth, seventh, eighth, I think something like that. <laughs> Absolutely incredible uh, uh, across the board in the top. So what, what's the secret to uh, placing towards the top end of the classes in the commercial? I enjoy the single fryer side because there's kind of an individual analysis to it. But at home, that's what you have to work through. It's, it's, getting, the, it's getting that maturity pattern right. I always say we're trying to make Little League World Series champions. We're not trying to make Major League Baseball players, and so we need that stout, little, fast-growing kid that can kick, hit it over the fence, you know. And that's if they don't turn out later, that's you can't fall out of love with them when they're little friars. You just have to make your selection pressure right in that window, and and uh, so, and then you got to make you know enough of them to have some selection pressure at home. So we had about maybe 80 that to sort through to bring uh, 20. So, I mean, and, and that definitely is a huge help, but having the quality of genetics to begin with and knowing what, where you're at is, is definitely the, the, the key go, get-go to begin with. I know I got my hands on uh, several of those, and I, I thought I knew what hard was until I touched those top animals. They were just absolutely like bricks. I, I swear he put concrete in them before he brought them into the showroom. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, you know, some of, these, some of them have, you know, Traveling these little young rabbits is a, is the toughest part. I mean, we we really appreciate Ohio putting this thing right on the front end so that when they get here, you know, before they have a chance to really, you know, dry out on us and and maybe eat or not, uh, especially in a pen where you're trying to keep that uniformity across the set of three, it's hard enough to do it at the house pulling them right out of the cages when they're they haven't had a lot of stress. But you go hauling them, you know, two to 10 hours and then they sit around for two days and then you it's the same three they may not they're going to be just a lot different rabbits without uh without some real over oversight you know and some luck you know so so this is great where a lot of us were able to travel and show them this evening you know within 12 hours let's say of when we were they kind of got left left the house for them so uh and, and we we talked about it with terry too but uh, um but you alluded to more with the, with the single fryers. What what specifically do you want to have in an awesome single fryer? Uh, I think, especially in the New Zealands, the first thing you do is they got to be built right right behind the ear, you know. And that's that's having some shoulder and some power, but it's also getting started on that elevation in their top line. Um, if you analyze the show pig industry or the or the cattle industry or the uh, goats sheep, uh, these things aren't long as a freight train. I mean, they need there's a moderate a moderate length of body that you're after because we can only make these things so big, you know, in a in the time that we have. And if they're going to be thick, they can't be long and thick. It's just like a rubber band. So, uh, so if if there's anything when they're little at home you've got to really start sorting them right behind the ear they've got to be they got to have a a tight set of shoulders on them and they need to have a start in their rise pretty quick just like you would at, you know when these final show rabbits uh, are judged they're after that but when they're young some of these things are kind of like baby ducklings i mean they're just a little gangly and and those show rabbits those guys have learned how to they know which ones can make it and which ones aren't. Um, we have to have them even a little shorter coupled yet because we need them to balance up at five and a half pounds or five pounds and start to proportionally be really stout. And that means they they've got to they've got to be a little shorter bodied. Well, and I think that's one of the things that you, I know we we've talked before on it is um, you've kind of recognized that 
a New Zealand is a commercial rabbit, and there definitely is um, uh, they're a super meaty breed. Uh, but in addition to that, choosing the like the goal of your program makes a huge difference on the the breeding stock you select and, and what you choose for the next generation. Um, I know that that's what you've said is that you know you're really looking for those ones that are um, that look the part at that 10 weeks of age, and and that's the I think that's part of the secret of, of your success is you've recognized that, and you you aren't necessarily focused how they look as as a six month old or eight month old rabbit. You, you can't fall out of love with them. I mean they they you know, the the ability to generate like yourself is you know is is all about the right size and the right time and so you know if if i was trying to win the six eight doe class in the open show i want to pick an awesome six eight doe to be the parent stock to build everything around i don't want to pick a fryer and i may not want to pick a senior doe you need that age to be right and everything to be at 12 o'clock and so when we're picking these fryers we need to find our bucks and our does at you know, these kind of, what's great about these shows is we're getting the chance to get another opinion rather than just at the barn and my, you know, my one opinion. But you know, what these things are now, you just got to put them on feed and forget about them. You can't, you can't overanalyze them as they start to change and not become exactly what you, you're. Because you, you feel that if they look, if they look great now, this is the age you want. So the next generation, you're expecting those same tra traits to come through. That's right. I mean, a buck that's good here sires genetics that are going to be, should be in theory. And, and if you, if you compound that over generations, you will change the maturity pattern. It, it, it's, it's just through the natural, thank you. It's just through the natural selection of uh, what they look like at that age. And, and, it's going to breed that trait as you go on in time. Yeah, I don't think it's any more complicated than that. So I think you just have to – I think what happens is is if you don't take good notes when they're little and they're that size, and you lose track of the fact that that was the right one. And then later on, a litter mate that, was, that wasn't as good may become the better rabbit at 6'8", and now all of a sudden you change your mind and you have – taken a step backwards instead of a step forward when you when you start using them for next generation is that yeah absolutely makes sense yeah because you're you're picking out that one because you, you feel that that's the the style that you want it to look like and that's the the age that you want you've 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 decided to choose that that's the class you want to focus on totally makes sense and it may be that um you've got a trait you need like you're trying to improve and your shoulders are in that hip loin junction. You've got to get more flare and width. So when you find a something, or you buy something that is really good there at that age, you know, that's the reason you're keeping them is to try to improve, improve there. And uh, and if your does aren't good there, a percentage of your babies still aren't going to be good there, even with a new buck. So you so there, it just is going to take generational turn. And a lot of people probably don't make enough rabbits. Uh, you've got to just be an aggressive breeder and continue to make rabbits and sort rabbits and make rabbits and sort. And, and in the fryer deal, they're at a very young, marketable age when we're making those decisions. So you don't have to have as much cage space as somebody that's trying to evaluate their six eights. And they've got to keep them, you know, until they're six eight. And they... So. And this roaster class is a great example. I mean, some of these were probably outstanding single fryers when they were little. They probably have to be, really, to move on into this size. But, but there could be litter mates at home that actually were the better single fryers, and, uh, and their code isn't right for today. I mean, there's a number of things that have to kind of start, you know, hold together. Uh, to make to make yourself competitive here, age structure in these little fryers they they want to start in on a new coat. Part of that ten week thing is is, is they're just starting to get their first coat after that kind of baby fur that they're born with and develop with. So so the age affects the fur. So majority of the babies that aren't in good fur, it's because you're not selecting little fryers that are good fur at that age. So you have to. You've got to bring it along too, just like meat type. 
and balance and so do you, so when you're when you're looking at the the ones for meat type on like on the single fryers though or any of these commercial rabbits how, how important is the shape of the loin and shape of the hind quarter and like describe what it looks like it, it, when you handle those rabbits is it, a show judge wants everything to blend and, and really fit together. Um, if the base isn't wide enough and you try to make the loin uh, more expressive, it actually begins to push out the stifle, that, uh, which is up high on a rabbit because they're, because they're in that posed position. That, that ends up laying on kind of both sides of that loin or underneath it and if that loin gets too wide and there's not enough room underneath that rabbit will almost flare out so you you kind of catch that so you you can't change any one thing uh, without affecting other stuff so it, it, it's definitely a it's definitely a game of chess you know as you're changing them you know the move to win is not straight down the pipe you can't just all breed for loin because then you start losing the other parts. It, it definitely offsets it as you're as you're going. I think that's one of the toughest parts about breeding rabbits. And a lot of it's getting them wide enough underneath and square underneath. I mean, when you pick that rabbit up and they're and those hocks come together and those feet flare out, a lot of those rabbits just don't have enough structural width down underneath them. And some of that's internal leg and some things that will make them that way. So when you're uh, for like with the body, why is that important in any in any animal? You look at the width of the shoulders, and what's it between the shoulder blades is your rib, which is where your heart and your lung, and the, basically the factory that runs the motor that runs that rabbit is, and that's how that's why you want that's why you want lambs with, with with chest floor, and you want steers with chest floor, and we want these rabbits to have that because a fast growing a, a, a narrow uh, animal underneath is not a fast growing animal. They're not thrifty. They're typically their immune systems compromised. There's just a lot of really good things that come with one that's stout. Uh, they're hardier. So, uh, but there's there's also and, they, and they, eat, they eat more when they have wider chests and yeah, that's right. everything behind that's wider too. You can't be narrow fronted and then expect everything to just kind of blow up behind that either. I mean, you're right. I mean, they're they're their GI tract and everything else just feeds off of, but you got to have oxygen. So if you don't have a good set of lungs, you're in trouble. And so a, a set of shoulders allows them to have, have a big set of lungs. So uh, in the roaster class, fifth place went to uh, Chris Bowes and Cindy Harper. And the fourth place is uh, Chris Bowes and Cindy Harper. And they also have the remaining three rabbits on the table. So they're going to be taking the first through fifth place in the roaster class. First through eighth place. <laughs> Thank you. Go, go. Does that sound right? Nice meat type. Just lacks a little flesh right down the center of the back, a little fullness over the sides of the rump to compete with the pretty rabbit at the top. Second, that's a super loin. Look at the loin on this thing. That's crazy. That's crazy, isn't it? Wait till you see the next one. How about C53? Does that sound right? Nice meat type. Just lacks a little fullness over the sides of the rump and not quite finished. And the Third place roaster is going in the auction here on Sunday. Look at this. Put a loin on this one. Good. There you go. And it's deep too. Looks like that deep. And that makes the winner F <laughs> FLO2. Do you got one of those? Super meat tight, flesh condition, finish to the coat. Awful nice rabbit, guys, whoever that is. Jeez. Man, that's you got. And once again, first through eighth place was Chris Bowes and Cindy Harper. I think she is. I'm just like, do you see that thing? Wow. Is that right? This rabbit's going to Texas. Yeah. Right? Can we get a picture of 
Yeah. Sure. Well, this one's green. You want the first one? Huh? Those were first to make. Yeah. Wow. Go-Go was the one that's going to be in the third place. Third places? Yeah. Third places? Thank you. But this thing here is phenomenal. You see that thing? Mm. You want lighter, lighter than a dollar bill, Thank baby? Thank you. I kept thinking, look at the oil on this thing. Smooth. All right, we are live at the 2022 uh, National New Zealand Show. It's the Open Meat Pen class here on Friday evening in Columbus. Uh, and here with me, I have Terry Grubb. He's a, a, a legend or an icon when it comes to meat pens. Um, he's always done tremendously well in the market classes. And so uh, we figured this would be a good time to talk about what makes a good meat pen rabbit and what makes a good meat pen. Well, uh First of all, of, of the breeding program, uh, you've got to get rabbits that with with muscle, and uh, and you, the bottom line is you've got to know, you got to be able to pick quality rabbits. You got to know what a good meat pen rabbit looks like. So learn your good, and then you can go from there. Uh, you breed your does. Uh, if you're going for a, a show, you should have several does bred. If they're Related, they um, it's probably better. What you're looking for is uniformity, uh, but muscle is uh, and meat type is number one. It's 40 points. Then you want these rabbits firm, in good condition. Condition is 30 points. You like to have them uniform. And there's somebody six, can for uh, a, elements for of I steal it. A lot of people <laughs> will uh, just go, oh, they all weigh the same. That's only one. And they're supposed to be equal, so that's 20 points. Um, and but you got to—they got to be equal in fur. They got to be equal in condition. Uh, there's six different ways. So familiarize yourself on which which are uh, 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 uniform and equal in that. The last uh, and least important is fur, but it's not completely unimportant. You like to have these rabbits in good fur condition. Uh, and a, a nice fur. Uh, the felt, one of these days, maybe worth the more than they are now. It, it has been in, in the past, yeah, gotcha. but we do want these felts. But we're giving 10 What'd you say, nine? That. So yeah, what nine. you do is you just, uh, okay. you're judging these, you can put do them it. together, uh, and you uh, weed out the ones that don't make it, and the ones you want to put together uh, um, as far as uniformity, but, uh, uh, that's what you do on a pen of three, uh, but meat type still is is the most important. Go ahead. When when you're saying meat type uh, and and hind quarter, what what are you looking for, or what do you want them th them to have? Well, you want these full hind quarters. They go when you put your hands over them, they'll go clear down to the table. They won't indent in. They won't undercut. Uh, also, on the top, you want to make sure when they're going. Uh, when you're going rubbing your hand over, you don't feel uh, the spine. Uh, that's something that uh, that's, that's shows lack of meat type. So you want them very full. The front end, you want a nice, heavy front end, but yet the back end is supposed to be even more uh, prominent. And they're just big, full back ends. And, uh, and even when you're looking at them from the front, you don't want to see the, your, their legs like crossed in the front. It shows that they don't have a lot of uh, width in their body. And that's a problem with some of them. We're getting a lot of rabbits that's real deep, real 
high, but they're kind of narrow, and they're not uh, sufficient in meat type. They lack in that uh, muscling, and, uh, but that's and that's what the bottom line is: is, is muscle is the most important. Uh, so, and, and, and that's where. Leah, like you're saying, because the idea is that with these main market classes, that if we were to harvest them here today, then what would they dress out as and, and what would they look like? And so I think that's why when you're saying that muscle is the most important thing, that's the uh, exactly where it's at. That's the end game. That is the end game. And, and I've had rabbits uh, that will, uh, well, I've had the packer uh, have them dress out at 62%. And that's, that's pretty good. That's what you'd like to be, over 60%. And uh, on there's only a couple of the uh, breeds yeah. that can really do that consistently, and of course those are the New Zealands and the Californians. Uh, I'm not saying other breeds can't be in the meat pens, but there's a reason you see very prominent uh, in virtually all your uh, higher end meat pen shows are going to be New Zealands and Californians, and I'm, and there's even some colored New Zealands that that can can compete at a high level. But, it's uh, New Zealand's and California's. It's the ones that are easier uh, to get in that meat. There's other varieties, but those are the ones that we stick with. When, when you, and when you're saying that uh, having them have the width of rib cage is very important, what, what comes with that when, when they have a wide uh, capacity of, of rib cage and stomach? Well, you don't want you don't want pot bellies, uh, you know, where they're just sticking out. But when you go over them, you don't want those indentions. You want it all to be even, solid, back through as you're putting your hands. Uh, I probably should have had a demonstration here, but we can we can still do that. Yeah, but it's uh, that's what that's what you're going to you want. And uh, as I say, that rib cage. But when you're going out, you don't want to see like indentions right there at the hip. Uh, you don't want to, we want fullness, and that's that's very key. A lot of them right now, uh, you're even getting uh, uh, some of these rabbits that got so much loin, they've only nice on top, it's got a butterfly effect. Uh, that's what we haven't been seeing too much in the, in the uh, rabbits, but of course in hogs, and lambs, and cattle, that is very desirable. So that's something we might want to look at in the future. But we are getting a lot more uh, uh, muscle over that loin, which is very important. And, of course, the hindquarters, uh, they'll fold back there. Technically, it is the most important. There's where your most meat's going to be. Pick the blue one. What do you think of that? And when you, when you say the butterfly effect, like on, on hogs where they have the, the both sides of the loin that stick up, those animals have a ton of muscle, uh, and that's why it's sticking up like that. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You've got that. Uh, and it's not only the swine, it's, uh, you know, your cattle and your, your lambs. Okay. Here. And we're getting uh, market goats. But it, all your meat, placement. your mammals are, are like that. They'll have that over the loin. Uh, they'll have that when they're carrying a large amount of muscle, they'll start butterflying. Okay. And as I said, that's rather recent in rabbits, but we have been starting to see rabbits. We'll have to see, but we have processed rabbits. Yes. The ones with the butterfly effect are, okay, are dressing out at a higher percentage. Um, so, uh, so nine, isn't it? I'm going to sneak up there while he's placing them. And then I, I do want to come back, though. The ninth is right here. And this is the weak link. So the, it looks like coop number 29, private ear number for one of them is 168. Yes. And this is the weak link. This has fair meat type, a little bit long and rangy. Trifle out of flesh condition and compete with a pretty rabbit that's going to win the class, a pretty pen that's going to win the class. Eight is like a SF1 is one of them. There's no coop number in here. You got, you got, you know which one it is. Once again, just has fair meat type, and this is the weak link. It's SF1. This has fair meat type and just out of flesh condition to move up any further in this class. So they can go back. And then it's these guys.
And we are uh, in the open single fryer class uh, here at the New Zealand Nationals in Columbus, Ohio. All right, so continuing that conversation we were having uh, while we were judging the meat pens with Terry Grubb. Uh, I'm a, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the, uh, um, so when, you, when you're looking for selecting breeding stock for meat pens, what, what exactly are you looking for? There again, you're looking for that uh, early maturity. And, you know, I care more what they look like at five pounds than I do at 10 pounds or at 10 weeks, whether they're 10 months. We, we were selecting these for that certain age. Many rabbits do, uh, do not look very good when they're mature, but are very good at the, uh, at the uh, meat pen or 10 week age. Uh, and on the other hand, some rabbits don't look very good at 10 weeks, so that makes show rabbits. We're, so there's kind of a meat line out there, but uh, in saying that, the reason these market meat rabbits and commercial is so important is what a wonderful way to introduce youth to a market project. It's practical, they're easy to handle, and take my county, Ross County in uh, southern Ohio. There, this year there's 483 youth that's taking a market project. What a wonderful way to expose our youth to a market, and rabbits in particular. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm really set on raising uh, meat pens that are quality, uh, not coals, and it takes, it takes some special breeding, but it also takes uh, proper facilities and, um, uh, and feed uh, and care. That's, that's keynote. Uh, so if you get into the the market end of it. Don't think this is just an easy project. It's a project that you can handle, and uh, and it is very more desirable than any of the larger, uh, much of, many of the larger animals and projects. So, but that's there is no set on this is going to make ideal. You have to experience and breed and see how how they are. But what we're choosing is we want these rabbits to look really good at uh, you know, five pounds, maybe a little more, or at 10 weeks. That's what we want these rabbits to be. Uh, so. And that's where, too, with the, the market weight on these is for, to be eligible for the class is three and a half to five and a half pounds. Um, but the ones that are more competitive are the ones that have more overall retail product, being the ones that are heavier, being the five pound, five and a, closer to five and a half. Right. Um, <laughs> what... Um, See, that's, that's why we raised the weights here a few years ago. It was three to five. Now it's three and a half to five and a half. And I would not be surprised in here in a few years we will go to that four to six because that's what the packers are calling for, the processors. They want a little more product. And uh, the largest in the country is Pelfries, and they call for four and three quarter to five and three quarter pounds. It's pretty narrow range. But that, I think that's the trend, and things change, markets change. All species of livestock has, the recent trend has been a little heavier weights, and uh, rabbits certainly included. So. And I know that we've talked about that um, a lot of times before with the uh, with market hogs. I mean, when you were uh, a youth or younger, uh, and when your kids were showing, what was the market weight of hogs, and then what is it now? Well, when I was... When I was in 4-H, they had the ideal of uh, uh, they had it, the weights printed on the on the door of the extension, uh, and it was ideal weight for steers was 1,000, ideal weight for market hogs was 200, and lambs was 75. Now that's more like 1250 to 1350. Uh, the hogs are 240, 280. Our fair even has 290 limit, 
market lambs down to the North American last year, and they had market lambs of one that weighed 150 pounds. So, but that's that's where we're getting these animals, market animals, with more product, and and the demand is just for a heavier, uh, in many cases, a heavier market animal. So that's why the rabbits, I think, the trend is up, and we'll go eventually go to that. Uh, I'm sure uh, because you know, 50 years ago, sorry, 50 years ago, uh, uh, you know, we had virtually the same weights that we have now when everything else is is uh, went up, and uh, and we're we're getting in. And that's becoming more and more, as I say, more and more important as a market project. Uh, and the youth, uh, as I say, what a wonderful way for youth to experience the market and have relatively less invested. And certainly, uh, you know, you never heard of a youth getting run over like a steer by a market rabbit. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, a good, that's a good joke right there. <laughs> so... But uh, it's a many of the youth can handle these, uh, and uh, but but it it's, it can be fun and, and and enjoyable, and it is, uh, and there's seem, doesn't seem like there's certainly as much pressure when you get these high dollar steers and and uh, barrows and and lambs, uh, you know, relatively less invested into market rabbits, uh, and they are. Uh, as I say, uh, getting very, very popular. Uh, and that's one, been one of the recent trends for sure is that uh, the large animal livestock, uh, people are, are definitely uh, finding interest in, in doing the market rabbits. And, and obviously we've always had a strong uh, increase in uh, interest from the, uh, the, the market rabbit project inside of rabbits as a whole. But there has been a lot more interest from the large animal livestock people come to, to, the, to rabbits. There is many large stock. Uh, that, uh, you know, pigs, I have people calling all the time that have had steers, uh, lambs, uh, even I mean, goats, let alone swine. And it's been, uh, as I say, it's kind of gratifying, but they, they seem the practicality uh, of, these, of these rabbits and, and the rabbit, rabbit shows and the meat pens. And, and, uh, and it can be very competitive. It is very competitive. Just as I say, at our fair, 483 youth, um, and, uh, you know, it takes a good one to win or a good pen to win there. So, uh, but we're getting, we're getting these where more people recognize there's kind of a meat side to this um, in the competition, and they're breeding for that, and we're just getting a better product. Um, and that's kind of the clux of it, and there is... Uh, just if you go in, you know, kind of go in slow, but make sure you have and get with somebody that's that's had the, so you can see what their facilities. Because I just stopped at a feed store, and they had uh, you know Amish made cages. They looked real nice. I even noticed the floor was upside down in them, the wire floor. And then they have a lot of wood. Well, that's not so good when you're raising these rabbits because for some reason they want to resonate toward those wood seams and, and that. And they can get uh, their feet dirty. If there's two or three of them in there, they're jumping on each other, getting themselves self dirty. And it's just better to keep them clean in a whole wire cage. But that's just, and, and keeping them safe. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about getting hurt by the rabbits, but you do have to worry about other things hurting the rabbits. So. Yeah, there's just a, uh, a protocol that you use with uh, uh, these, these rabbit projects. It's it's not hard, it's not difficult, but it does take some degree of diligence. And uh, so, but I think a lot of people will enjoy these if they they get into them. And uh, I certainly have been very rewarding for me and enjoyable over the years. And you've always been extremely competitive in in. Uh the, the market rabbit classes. Um, what, what what are some of the main secrets that uh that that get the ones towards the top? Well, one thing you should pick from a pool of them that are similar age, and you gotta you gotta plan your um, uh, your show. You gotta plan that this here the show is ten weeks. That's when you uh, want those rabbits to be born. 
and then you take that group and then you separate them. It may be six or seven weeks. I prefer to put them in individual cages. And then you can take and individually have a card and you can weigh these uh, the first week or so, maybe only once or twice. Uh, but there toward the end of the show or end of the where your show date is, you may be weighing these rabbits once a day, sometimes twice a day in the last few days. <clears throat> and you're trying to adjust your feed and feed an uh, you answer that? and feed additives uh, accordingly. If they, they look like they need uh, a little extra feed, um, you know, you give that to them. Uh, as they, we have little things that you can give them. I use M&M Plus, which we worked with at, uh, at our barn. I got a test station and found that it has a positive effect. But uh, then that way you can look at these, get them growing, and then you start matching them up. You get them out. Every time you get them out, you just don't get them out. You get them out. You not only weigh them, but you look at them. You want to see what their fur is. You want to see what their, uh, what the, uh, their, not only the depth of body, but their uh, meatiness. Uh, their, uh, uh, and then you try and match those up. And that's, that's how for you to just take, like I've got a meat pen of three, and I've just got three rabbits. Well, you don't have to do much work there because... Uh, you don't have anything to choose from. Of course, your success level will probably be significant level uh, lower, but uh, that's that's the best way is to get them out and know. The bottom line, you got to know what a good one looks like. So go to a breeder uh, that has some success in this, and they will more than happy to show you. And also look at their facilities. Look at their uh, is the, are the rabbits clean? Are they healthy? And that's what you want to. Uh, uh, you know, shoot for, uh, and uh, and then there's these. We got these wonderful judges out here. You go to a rabbit show, and I have yet seen a judge that refused to talk to a youth. And so uh, that's what you want to do. You want to utilize all your opportunities. Uh, and uh, so, <clears throat> I'm changing the topics a little bit, but you had mentioned it a, a little bit ago as well on the the Ross County Fair. I think that's one of the the very unique fairs across the country. I know you said that there's 482 youth that are signed up this year, um, and, and it's just absolutely incredible that you guys get that many kids within your county to take a market rabbit, and they only get to take one pro one meat, one market project per species or one market rabbit across the whole? There is only, you can only take one project. Now, that did change this year, but last year, the last few years, well, the last 20 years, because we was having... The last one, when they decided just to have one project, market project, you know, you can only take one, let alone take one and just sell, take two and sell one. So you can only take one because we topped off at 620 meat pants when we had more than multiple. So it wasn't, it was getting out of hand almost. So we said, well, we'll just let them uh, take what they want the most. And as I say, they are still 400. Uh, I would say this year they probably gained 50, 60, or 70 more than what they would if they wasn't able, uh, able. because they want to concentrate on these, uh, and it's it's very commendable for the youth that they they want to do that, and uh, it's uh, um, it it has worked. It's worked. We've we went uh, a judge right here is Chris Hayhow. He showed in Ross County. We were in 4-H together, and he can remember when he first judged there. There might only been six meat pens. But then we started uh, getting uh, a little more uh, uh, PR out there and, and really taking it to the people. And we got parents and grandparents interested in it. And then not only was they having their youth uh, or their, their grandkids and kids and grandkids take them, but they were um, uh, also helping out and, uh, at the sale. As I say, it's kind of remarkable. Two years ago, they didn't have a sale last year, but two years ago, they had 400 and some of these pens that went through the sale. They averaged $648. We had a 270 some thousand dollar uh, sale gross just for the rabbits. And some of the ones, uh, none of them, I think, uh, sold below 350 If they happen to sell for 300 
they would be friends of 4-H. But that's how this unit, and it snowballs. And this is what we need. We, it, it, it just kind of snowballs. When you have a success, it builds on success. And uh, so that's what we're just trying to do. And that's why I want, I think, uh, this youth can be really expanded. Uh, and uh, that's why we care. And, and the ARVA cares about the youth. Uh, uh, and uh, our, uh, certainly our clubs, no club certainly benefits more probably than the uh, New Zealand's. They put an awful lot in it. And uh, they even have sweepstakes now in the clubs for roasters. Uh, and that never was. But uh, it's, it's just the, our times. Uh, so. it's, it's, always, or it's always continuing to evolve. Yes, that's right. You're absolutely right. And, of course, you're, you're pretty young. You'll see it involve another 50 years. Uh, and you'll be, and you'll remember back this time, well, I noticed when it was this, and this came to, came to this, and uh, we're, uh, we're, just real, uh, uh, we're just real happy how a lot of this is turning out for the, for the rabbits and, and for the youth that's taken them. Uh, and that's, that's important. Uh, but... Uh, to get in, I will tell you, get into breeding these market rabbits. There's no slam dunk. There is no, hey, I'm in it and an instant success because there's so many of the uh, youth that that's competitive. Uh, and But with that said, the harder you work and the more you understand these projects and what the proper way to do, the luckier you get. Uh, so, uh, so when you're... Uh when you're picking out your replacement breeders and stuff, how, how do you do it? How do you how do you find the ones like in your own barn, just to keep going, you know, year after year and always be competitive? Because the the pen that would have won tw 20 years ago or 10 years ago is is uh, isn't good enough to win today. So how do you keep getting better and evolving? <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, I do. I'm very fortunate. I do have an awfully lot of judges come to my place. I get their input. I know what I'm looking, and, and actually some of the judges have come to ask for help on what do I think. And it's not, and, and it is, all we're, we're still concentrating on uh, meat type. That's still the most important. And then the condition, we want those rabbits to be very firm, very fresh, and uh, certainly not overaged. But uh, you keep them in the 70 days, which they're supposed to be, you're, you're going to have them fresh. It's just getting that meat type, and then there's some lines that breed a real nice finishing coat, and uh, and we like to get those meaty rabbits with those nice little finished coats, and then you just match them up for the uniformity. But uh, the biggest thing is you get you a, a rabbit, it may, they're going to have a sale here in a couple of days, and there will be a, some of these market rabbits here that's done very well, maybe in a sale. Um, and, hey, what a wonderful way. If you want one that he really looked good at 10 weeks, and that's what you're shooting for, that's one that you may be interested in. Uh, and uh, so, but do, do, Yeah, do you have a tendency to see the ones that place well on the table that have those kind of characteristics that we're looking for? Do you see them then being awesome breeders back in the barn? Uh, more than likely. That's what happens. Uh, we uh, uh, we see well. I'll take for instance. I had a, a doe that won there at the convention several years ago in Indianapolis. And we sold her in a sale. The people who bought her uh, one reserve at the state fair uh, one year and champion the other the next year, and so that followed through. Of course, I let them breed it to my buck. That was part of. But uh, uh, yeah, what a. What a wonderful way, and they're, they're, they think offspring from that doe and, and the bucks, they're going to be in the hunt again this year. Uh, but they, they spent a lot of money, but they got a quality. Every, it seemed like there's an awful lot of people interested in a doe that wins a convention, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, or a rabbit that wins. It's happened to be a doe. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it was Indy Queen. But, uh, yeah, and they do. If you, especially if you get a line, they seem to breed true. I just happen to be fortunate to uh, get uh, Bob Crawford's line, which is 
one of the icons in the rabbits, but all his didn't work for market rabbits, and I honed them down. When I bought his, he said, they're yours. You know, I know you'll be taking them a little different, and there's some that's not going to work. They'll be wonderful show rabbits. They will not. Those there, you know, I sold to show people. And the uh, market, I kept and, and propagated those. But you keep, you, you might raise 25 or 30, but you might end up only keeping two or three. And so you keep doing this, and you're going to get better. The key is knowing what you're looking for. you got to know what a, really a good one is. There again, judges can help you. Breeders can help you. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's, that seems like a more practical way. Yeah. Sunday after the commercial, they're going to have a sale here, and this where this is where it happens if you're interested in market animals. They will have some tremendous market animals. Me and myself, uh, I'm donating to the club because I believe in it. Uh, pick of the barn, uh, and it should be. Uh, I've had several people in from several states, so that should be interesting. But we're going to have some top breeders. There may even be some of these these market rabbits in that, and what a wonderful way to uh, get these uh, uh, you know brood stock, and where uh, you got to have really proven brood stock from that. Uh, so, yeah, I, that's a an exciting opportunity. You've never done that before, where you've let somebody come or whoever wins the auction come in your barn and pick have pick of the barn. Yep. Yes, that's that's what's going to be and. Uh, Matter of fact, I had a judge come, and he said, boy, I don't know, there's a doe back here. Most, most people want the bucks because you can propagate them. He said, but there's a doe back here. It's almost to die for. So it'll be interesting to see what the, uh, not only how the sale goes, but what the person picks. Uh, and I've got a, a pretty solid array that's, that's kind of a proven track record. Um, and, uh, you know, I've even, I've even got the doe that won both shows at the uh, – you know, Piketon last year. Uh, she's a bred doe, bred back to her sire. Uh, so those should be some real uniform rabbits. But it'll be interesting to see what the sale does go. And, and uh, But that's not the only thing. There's going to be some quality rabbits in there uh, from some top breeders that do this a lot, and that's what you need. That's one of the things that has always been exciting watching the New Zealand auction through the years is that there's always really outstanding genetics from the top <clears throat> breeders across the country that uh, you can find the, the parts and pieces that you're looking for and the, the different goals that you have in your program uh, by, by coming to the auction. And I'm always amazed at the quality and, and the, the prices obviously reflect that. Um, I'm, I'm sure interested to see uh, what some of those top ones go for this year. It, sh it should be very interesting, and, and it's a challenge because there's there's going to be rabbits in there that may not go as high as, as or at a high price that can be very beneficial to breeding programs because they're bred for meat pens, and uh, you know what you're kind of starting out with. So uh, that's uh, it'll be a good opportunity for some people that's that's really wanting to get into this uh, on a serious uh, level. Uh, but that's yeah no I, I i totally agree we uh if you have questions please feel free to, to comment them in the chat um we had seen one come in uh, uh will the the auction on sunday be live streamed um i'm not certain at the moment yet but i'm sure that somebody i'm, I'm sure it will be somehow The, uh, so one of the things I think that has really evolved, though, in, in uh, New Zealand's is for the longest time, whites were always the, the dominant variety. Um, 
but but now with obviously all the different colors of of New Zealand's, um, and we saw that in the the meat pen class that the there was a black pen that won uh, second place. Yeah, absolutely, and they were they were they were a solid pen, and they were well matched, and they they won, and they even pushed the the champions, which happened to be uh, uh, whites. They pushed down. Uh, it was interesting, of course. The same breeder had the three top pins, and uh, he's. Uh, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> at, a, at a national show, it certainly is. And uh, but he's he, he, there's a young man there that you know we started out. And he's 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 done it, and his uh, kids are very good in it. His his daughters and, and he himself, and they was very competitive. He won the meat pens at uh, first and second. For second and fourth at the convention last fall, and some of these can, uh, shows and conventions, you know, first place down there is a thousand dollars. So you can, you know, it's it's worth worth going to, uh, and uh, so uh, rewarding. Yeah, sorry. Uh -oh. Yeah, and there, there's always the, um, that's one of the exciting things is that with the market classes, um, the, there's different sponsorship opportunities. Um, and and uh, I know that last year at convention, there was $1,000 for winning first place in the, the for our grand champion national meat pen. 5100 in, in the uh, meat, just the meat pens. And then they had other pots for single fryers and roasters. Wow. So, yes, there was 5100. 10th uh, place was $100. First place was a thousand, so we can figure it out. But that's both for youth and open, and so it was it was very competitive, and uh, people seemed to enjoy it. Uh, the uh, um, yeah, and th and that's where uh, I, I know Terry said that in 2023 that they're uh, they're expecting to have another huge market or commercial um, uh, show uh, with with uh, big prize money as well. One of the questions we had was who won the, the meat pen first, second, and third was uh, Andrew Gock from Indiana. Andrew's uh, definitely won uh, very competitive in the meat pen classes nationally and at the state level uh, with his family consistently winning grand champion or reserve champion uh, at the uh, Indiana State Fair. Once we get down to the top ten, then we're going to come in there. All right, and we're getting close down to the top ten. Well, as I um, get ready to go inside the circle, um, I, I definitely know it's a pleasure to get to do the interview with uh, Terry Grubb, an icon within the, the meat pen uh, and, and all market rabbits for the hobby for uh, an extended period of time, so it's a, a true honor. Um, is there anything else you want to say as we wrap up the interview? No, I just I, I just would like to encourage if you have the least bit of interest, encourage youth and and adults. Uh, they can get a lot of self satisfaction. It's a great hobby uh, to try the rabbits. And uh, um, but but I also uh, appreciate David. You you've been you've been uh, very supportive of uh, the commercial classes for for several years. Last several years. And you yourself can have given clinics. Uh, so uh, I, there again, I thank you. Uh, the promotion of this, I believe, is very beneficial to the ARBA and, and the youth and the people it's taken. Uh, so again, I thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a it's a tough class. I've I've been fortunate to win it a couple of times, but it's a it's a, it's a super super hard class to win, and it's uh, fun to. I uh, can get to come out and, and watch them and see what the top ones are. So, good deal. I, I'm going to go inside the circle, but thank you, Terry. The checks are nice, too. <laughs> the checks are nice, too. That's right. <laughs> thank you.
Yeah, we're down to the top floor. surprise you. No, you know how it works. How about MC2? You got one of those? Nice meat type, just beating on finish only for the balance of the class. We're nitpicking now, you know it. Back some good ones. <laughs> Look at this thing. Ooh, ooh. Man, oh man. So we got eight left. a little fullness through the midsection and flesh down the center of the back. Not quite finished in coat, but super meat tight. 
I can say that on everybody that's left. Seventh is K6. You got one of those. Same as the last one, nice meat type, like a little fullness over the sides of the rump and flesh right down the center of the back. You want two of them? Yes, sir. I'll take those two. Now we're to the bridesmaids, is that right? You're right. Oh, but I like you too much. We are down to the top five single fryers. Fifth place is Andrew Gock. Nice body shape, nice meat type. Just lacks a little fullness over the sides of the rump and just a smidge soft in flesh. About K3 is K3 yes. is also Andrew Gock. Same as the last one, just lacks a little fullness over the sides of the rump. Super loin on this guy. Just a little rough, right down the center of the back. Oh, Third place is Ed Botwell. Third place is Ed Botwell. I like both of these. Second tonight is K8. You got one of those? Yes. Slickest rabbit in the class. Just could use a little more fullness over the sides of the rump. Pretty good flesh condition, meat type, and coat. Second place is An Andrew Gock. You got one of those? Yes. Super, super little rabbit, whoever this is. Super meat type, flesh condition. Quite finished in coat, but if that's the only thing I don't like about her, awful nice rabbit. Not bad, is it? I love how hard they are. What? I love how hard they are. Oh. I, if I had a bunch of no places, it would kill her, you know? First place is Andrew Gawk. Congratulations. Well, I'm so proud. I just know I found that thing. Actually, 
the third place rabbit, I kept thinking, wow. But then when you get them next to each other and you see the meat, that was awesome. Congratulations. We still got one more uh, live with the roaster class. Next up, we have the youth roasters. When we're evaluating the roaster class, the most important aspects of it are the overall meat type of the animals. So we're looking for them to be very muscular in the hindquarters, very muscular in the loin, very wide and deep loin, and have a very wide and uh, deep and muscular shoulder. That's the main <coughs> area emphasis on the, the roaster class. <coughs> the uh, next category that we're looking at is on the uh, condition of flesh, which is how firm the rabbit is. And the reason why we want them to be very firm in flesh is that uh, on the show aspect that it feels impressive, but the reason why it's very important is that the animals then also have, uh, when you're cooking them, uh, those ones are the ones that retain the most moisture. I thought you could do something with this. Six is Fuego. You got one like that? Pretty good meat type, but he just lacks flesh throughout. A little bit soft, not quite finished in coat. Fifth is like G29. Does that sound like one of them? Nice meat type, but doesn't have much flesh condition. Very rough down the center of the back. Just lacks finish to his coat. Fourth is RBS2, maybe. Does that sound right? Nice body shape, but very, very, very soft in flesh. Not finished in his coat, but nice density to the coat. Three real nice rabbits left. Third is TKE1. Beaten on finish of flesh only. Nice meat type, but just lacks a little finish to the flesh to move up into this top two. Second. Is one DF8. You got one like that? Yep. Pretty good meat type, just lacks a little fullness at the top of the rump and just a trifle soft in flesh tonight to compete with the pretty rabbit that wins the class. Who is L2? You got one of those? Had the best type, had the best condition of flesh and pretty good density of coat, just lacks a little finish. Nice rabbit, whoever said it is. Is that you? Yeah. Good job, man. That's a pretty good rabbit, you know that? Two, I think. Look bad. You ain't bad, old guy. I'm telling you, it's not bad. See if he'll sit up here. You knew you were going to win, didn't you? No. Get in there, Luke. Here, get in here. Put your picture not on your face. Turn towards me. There you go. Yep, get in there. There you go. Good job. Yeah, you may want to go over there. Good job. You want to get your reds up there too? Well, there you go. 
Six, seven, eight, nine. Ninth is J G eight, maybe. You got something like that? Yes. A lot of bad rabbit left up here. <laughs> this guy just needs a little more roundness of hip and firmness of flesh to compete with the pretty rabbits at the top of the class. Okay, Ripley. What's this one? J G five. Eight. 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 Sorry. J G seven. You got one of those? Yes. Just a little bit soft in flesh, but nice meat type. Not finished in its coat. To stay on the table. Watch your head. Is JG zero or nine? Nine. Nine. There you go. Same as the last one. Nice meat type. Pretty good loin, but very soft in flesh. Not quite finished in coat to stay on the table. Well, that one just needs a few more days, you know it? Power to the bridesmaid, aren't you? Sixth is number three. Do you got one like that? Yeah. That's sixth place. Did you find that one? Yeah. Sorry. Nice meat type, but lacks fullness and roundness of hip and firmness of flesh. Just a little rough right down the center of the back. Just got a baby coat. Yeah, that's number three. No, no, it's just number three. three. All right. Okay. Now we're in the money, aren't we? Fifth is JR2. Not a bad rabbit left up here. This guy just needs a little more fullness and roundness to hip for a nice meat type. A little rough down the center of the back. It just lacks finish to the coat. To compete with the pretty rabbit that's fourth, who is JG8, maybe? Does that sound right? Six. What's that? JG6. Like an eight to me. Well, then the eight we sent back must have been a six. Okay. So this is a JG eight. Yeah, and that's four. Okay. I can read this one real good. Okay. Even I can read it. How's that? Okay. This is a Got nice it. rabbit. Just feed it on finish only. Super meat type. Just a little soft in flesh. Not quite finished in coat. A nice rabbit. Whoever this is. Number four is third. Just beating on roundness of hip and firmness of flesh to the top two in the class. Got a soft little fuzzy baby coat, but a nice rabbit, whoever that is. Right there. And then number two. And then there were two. Get your buddy out. Second is number five. You got one of those? Yes, That's I that do. rabbit that was there that I said would be tough to beat. Yep. Made it clear to second. Awful nice rabbit. Good meat type, but just a little soft in flesh. Not quite finished in coat, but a darn nice little rabbit. And the winner, the winner. The winner is number one. Hey, that came out pretty good. One was the winner. Nice meat type, flesh condition, just not finished in coat. Awful nice rabbit. Well, this just thing had a coat, you know? Addy. Addy. Don't be rude, Addy. Said he was a rabbit. That's my warm one. Well, that was you saw it at the end. A couple were a little soft. Can we get a picture with the sure. real quick? Sure. Can we bring the pen back up? Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's you? Yeah. Pretty darn nice rabbit. Ma'am?
said, man of God, to try to placate the man of God. Man of God. Just try to please him. Man of God. All the men of Titus went to try to do that. You know, man, man of God, man of God. You know, everybody thinks of man of Titus as the devil, whoever that is. Okay. This is the one of God. This is the one. Do we think that way? Well, yes, we do. We don't have to say that. Man of God said all the men went over to the last camp. And this is like a page two. Is that one of them? Page one, and a page three, it looks like. Page three, it looks like. 